What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panuta for tutorials.eu. In this video, you are going to learn about game difficulty and what to consider. When we talk about the concept of game difficulty, we need to think about a higher concept, about the way a player progresses through your world, following the flow which was set by the game. It's what makes the players fully immerse with themselves in your world, to get to this state where everything around them just fades away and hours slip by like minutes. A perfect state of flow, only achieved by perfectly balanced difficulty and skill about what's called game progression. Naturally, we want our game to feel this way to make each and every player completely lose themselves in the immersive and perfectly balanced game we created. I mean, I guess that's why you're here in the first place or that you are here to find a way to completely obliterate your player's Dark Souls style. Which I respect, don't worry. But even though you're not going to be able to please everyone, since that's pretty much absolutely impossible, we can try and approach this goal as much as possible. So how would we go about doing that? Let's start with looking at statistics. So health, movement, vision, and whatever comes to mind with our specific game when talking about what our player can do. A simple way of upping the difficulty well, make him do no damage and die on one hint. There you go, legendary mode. Is it fun though? Absolutely not. This will easily take the player out of the flow and make them feel powerless, taking the whole fun out of the game. I mean, at least if that's the only thing you are doing and you really want to scale the game with pure stats. Think of a game like, well, every Bethesda title basically where high difficulty means being one shot and fighting against bullet sponge enemies. Yeah, not fun. But with some community made modifications, we get an environment where, yes, you die on one hit and now even more often, since enemies are even more precise, but they die on one hit also, resulting in an engaging experience that incentivizes strategy and planning ahead your battles. Just by making your player die instantly and get hit more often, but also making him stronger, you made a game way more difficult, but still fair and fun to play. And most importantly, immersive. Another example would be hitboxes in 2D and even 3D games. Just making a player's hitbox bigger would, although more difficult, just make the game seem unfair. I mean, he clearly didn't hit me. How did I even die, you know? Well, sometimes making the player's hitbox smaller, but giving the enemies more precision is a way better option. Especially when they one hit you. Quick pause. The video that you're currently watching is just a fraction of the entire course that I have to offer. So I built this complete Unity Masterclass course in which you are going to learn how to build real games and how to build them from scratch. So you're going to learn how to build a platformer game, how to build a Space Invaders clone, how to build a Fruit Ninjas clone and optimize it for mobile and export it for mobile as well, how to build a first person shooter game and finally how to build a tycoon game similar to Adventurists which is an endless game. So if you want to become a real game developer definitely check out the course. You can find the link in the description and you will get the course with a huge discount so don't hesitate as you will not not only get the course but you will also get it in a structured manner with all of the code as well as a Q&A section with a five star support. So get the course now, I hope to see you there. Imagine enemies visually shooting a meter beside you and your head spontaneously explodes. Yeah, no fun. But now imagine you're technically getting hit, but because of your hitbox, not making you feel really good since you dodged that impossible to dodge shot. And then when they hit you, well, now you understand. That was fair. I still have to get better at this game. You won't rage quit or say this game is trash or it was clearly your fault or whatever. You don't have to make the enemies hit the air around you. You can up the difficulty and the enemy skill by increasing their precision. So a better combat AI, more precision, Make them find you easier. Use better defensive mechanics. 
Those are all enemy skills that will make them feel smarter, more human-like and less just like bots. The simplest example of this would be StarCraft and APM, which stands for Action Per Minute. A simple thing that shows how many actions like upgrading a building or sending your troops to a specific location you perform in a minute. Now a computer obviously could do infinite way more than any player could. So they are typically limited by an APM limit. How many actions they are permitted to perform each minute. Now imagine using that for a difficulty system. The more difficult, the more actions are permitted. Suddenly your enemy feels smarter and more engaging and not just like a dumb brick wall that you have to take down with a BB gun. Because what's a technique that is getting used way too much in the game industry? Enemy stats. Do you feel like this game is too easy? Don't worry, here you go. That little jumpy bug over there now takes an entire magazine of M16 to beat. Have fun. Now don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that changing enemy stats is a wrong thing to do. I'm just saying to not abuse it. And if you need to use the bullet sponge techniques, at least make it make sense. Maybe by giving the enemy more armor visually when upping his health through the roof. At least now you see why it takes the entire magazine. Or make the little jumpy bug thingy have extra thick looking skin or body armor. That would work as well. But why not instead make them better at evading your hits, be more agile or hit with more force, as we explained before with the low health player. Instead of just standing there and unloading everything you got, you try to evade them and strategically place some hits down to wear your enemies out and weaken their defenses. Or just give your player an unfair advantage, but only if they truly master the game with player skills. Dark Souls? Impossible to win. But wait, you can dodge? Well, then just dodge. Still, still that. But give it enough time and you'll be learning how and when to use that dodge to your advantage. And suddenly you pull out your screen recording software and post a video about how you destroyed that boss without getting hit once. And afterward, danced over his decaying corpse. Fun game, you should try it. But there obviously is more to player skill than just giving them a fun mechanic to master and more ways to maybe teach them to master the game. You could show them via tutorials, you could teach them through the game progression itself or you know, you could just throw them in game with no introduction whatsoever and hope for the best. Minecraft did so and look at it, arguably the most popular game ever. This will really depend on each game. Maybe you need to teach them for the game to be fun, maybe not. A city planner? Maybe tell them what they can manage and what everything means. A fighting game? Just let them button smash to victory. Now how would we use those techniques? Well obviously we could add a difficulty setting in the settings where the user can then select from five different difficulties for example. But we need to think about it a little further in order to make the best game possible and the best gaming experience possible when it comes to difficulty. Going back to game progression, that doesn't only include the way a player progresses through the game but also how the game itself progresses. You can't just make the first encounter of a player be a guy that appears out of nowhere and hits you so hard it uninstalls your game. I mean you could and it still might even be fun but you shouldn't. The basic idea of making the game progress with you is so that while your skill level increases, the challenges do also. Making the game consistently engaging and rewarding to play. You shouldn't become overpowered, nor should the enemies be unfair. Let the player learn over time and get challenging experiences along the way. Not every player will master your game from the get-go and some will even have a really hard time doing so. Don't make your game frustrating challenging is not equal to frustrating. Maybe at the beginning enemies are less precise with their shots and you represent that with novice looking enemies as if they were still new and not so good with their weapons. And later at the end game you bring out the special units. Way more fun and beginner friendly that way. You can also try and adapt the game dynamically. 
That's then called Dynamic Difficulty Adjustment or DDA, which adjusts the difficulty based on how well the player does. Even though it's a system that's really difficult to adjust and balance, given the right parameters, it could be the best way of helping the player stay in flow. But be careful, since this can easily be exploited if it's too noticeable. One way of helping to mitigate that, apart from infinite fine tuning, that is, is like some Resident Evil games have done, by having a difficulty selection system and a slightly adjusting it around the chosen difficulty depending on the player, even overlapping with other ones. Like a player playing on normal that's doing really well could end up playing at the same difficulty as a player playing on hard that is doing poorly, but still with limits on either side. Definitely a good way to help with game progression and flow. Another way this was implemented is with some racing games you might have played, like Flat Out, where enemies drive faster the further behind they get, and slower the further in front they are. And I mean, the most obvious one is Mario Kart and its item boxes that give you an upgrade heavily depending on the position you're in. Alright, and one last thing that I want to do, talk to you about, and that is knowing your audience. I know you probably heard that a million times and probably never really understood what they say. Like what do you mean know your audience? Everyone is my audience. Everyone should play my game. My game is amazing. And yes, I get that your game is indeed amazing. That is fully true, but there will always be people that will differ in their opinions and visions of what's the perfect version of your game. Some might prefer more RPG features, some other more challenging arcade style battling, some people just want to RP a feudal Japan rice farmer, some others want to race through hell splitting demons in half. You can't just accept both sides and make a feudal Japan rice farmer with a chainsaw that breaks open a hellbound skull. Well. That does sound pretty cool actually, but you know what I mean. When half of your audience asks for a more story-driven, peaceful gameplay with the occasional fight here and there, and the other half for a more arcade-style gameplay with intense and unforgiving boss battles, you have to choose the direction you want to take. If not, you will just displease both sides and create a game with no audience. Know what your audience wants? Learn with what they ask from you and adjust the game flow to be the best it can be. And with that, you should have a much better understanding of how to make your game more enjoyable by using the right difficulty. And by the way, if you enjoyed this video, then leave a like. And if you used any of the knowledge that you acquired here, feel free to share it among your friends and potentially even in your game. Of course, that would be too much. But just please leave a like, hit that subscription button. It's for free, so just subscribe to the channel and you're golden. And leave a comment if you have any remarks. Thanks a lot for watching this video. See you in the next one.